Do you mind if we open up with a, a quick look at figure two? I can give you guys a quick uh, tour of the office. Uh, yeah, so I guess welcome, welcome to figure. Uh, yeah, we're Thank well you. over 100 engineers now. Uh, we're based here in Northern California in the San Francisco Bay Area. Um, we just unveiled um, last week, figure two, which is our second generation humanoid robot. And um, we have, um, right now we're manufacturing about one a week in our facility here in California. And, um, and we have, you know, several of them here now uh, on the floor. Um, so here's, you know, a quick look at a uh, figure two robot that we're um, about to start doing some tests on uh, right it's now. Amazing, I, I know your team is about to, uh, to activate it. If you're gonna say that the principal differences between figure one and figure two, I mean, just for folks, you know, the company's like two years old or less, right? You've gone yeah. from like zero to infinity super fast. Yeah. What, what's the what's the difference between what upgrades did you make in Figure it's, Two? Here? There's several. <laughs> so your, your, your top five. Yeah. So I think um, first is we tripled the amount of CPU and GPU on board, uh, just for more overall compute and inference. Uh, the second is we almost doubled the battery to about 2.3 kilowatt hours. Uh, it's all on board the system in the middle of the torso, uh, here next to basically the compute and uh, and GPU. Uh, we had all the wires all internal. Uh, so there's no, no external wires, uh, cabling, electronics. Uh, that's really for reliability and for overall packaging. Um, we also have a exoskeleton structure. So all the outer shells of the robot uh, actually take loads, uh, which is opposed to um, kind of how we did the first generation robots. So this, this would be like more akin to how you would do it like at, say aviation. My, my last company, Archer, we, like, you know, the skins on the aircraft take the loads of the vehicle. Um, so I think it's pretty unique here for um, a system like this. We also have uh, six onboard cameras, so we have more perception, more ability to see our surroundings. Where are the, where are the cameras on the, on the um, uh, robot here? We have them in the head, in the back, and in the lower torso. Yeah, that's cool. And I, I assume that the exoskeleton helps you reduce overall weight uh, of, the, uh, of the robot. Yeah, it's basically like, a, like overall, like, um, the parts will get a little bit stiffer as they get a little bit wider. Um, we found that um, having one structure for both crass loads and, and stiffness uh, is the right ideal mass trade. Uh, mm -hmm. And like figure one had kind of like both structure and outer shell for loads. And that's just really not ideal where you, um, you know, like the structure is really sized by crash loads. So then you end up having basically double mass in a lot of ways. Yeah. And the hands, have you made improvements on the, uh, on the hands on the? Yeah, so these hands here. Hold, hold his hand and show, and show us what it looks like to do it. These are our um, uh, fourth generation hands now. Huh. Um, and uh, we've made like quite a lot of improvements uh, over the previous generations. Um, better sensors, better packaging, better for mass, better strength, better speeds of the fingers. Um, overall, just better dexterity and control of like fine grain manipulation that we're doing uh, on board the robot. Uh, we need to do like human-like applications. Uh, so the more here that we can um, do human-like tasks and grab human-like objects, the, the better for, uh, for generalization of the robot. Amazing. And it's standing, what, about five, six? Five, seven yep, behind about you? Five, five, six. Yep. Yeah, amazing. All right, thank you for the, the quick glance.